what is up guys and welcome back to the channel guys last time or not last time well last time i was on andrew austin channel we did the seven things normal in sweden versus america and seven things normal in america that was scare swedes or something like that now we got five things sweden does better than america definitely an interesting title can't wait to see this and see what are some things that sweden does better than america so y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button send down those recommendations also i fixed my discord i was wondering why because i'll put the link and stuff and i was wondering what was going on why it wasn't working for you guys and i seen that the discord actually i had to change it to where it, the link was like it never expired type thing so my discord is available i do have an address where you can send me things all that will be in the description below but without further ado, also I order more candy and snacks. So we get a part two of me trying to some Swedish candy and snacks. So, but y'all hit that subscribe button. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, what's going on? Andrew coming at you. And in this one, I'm talking about five things that Sweden does better than the United States. That's coming up. guys, I thought it'd be fun to do this one and kind of pick five things that maybe you wouldn't think about that I think Sweden does better. And number one is going to be money. Now let me explain. When I first came to Sweden, I was not a big fan uh, of the fact that the Swedish money, all the, the Swedish kroners, uh, were different sizes. Mm -hmm. I, I always liked in the United States having all my bills exactly the same. Until someone said to me, Andrew, it's because people that are visually impaired or blind can tell the difference in the bills. And the more and more I thought about it, it just, just makes a lot of sense. It's something that we should probably do in the United States. That makes a whole lot of sense. Sorry for stopping it so early, but it does because, I don't know, I've seen, um, when I was younger, they redid, they made a movie about Ray Charles, and Ray Charles was blind, and they were trying to get him for his money. And what happened? He's, I mean, he's still kind of new, because, you know, just because he was blind, his other senses were still stronger than his eyes or whatever, but... He knew they was trying to steal money from him and take money, but people would do that too. People would try to take advantage of other people. Sad the more I thought about it, it just, just makes a lot of sense. It's something that we should probably do in the United States. Another thing I like is that Sweden is a cashless society. I didn't like it at first when I first came coming from the U.S. However, I haven't used any cash in five years. Oh, yeah. uh, in Sweden, we have something called Swish. Swish, Swish, Swish. And what we also have is Bank ID. Now, what's awesome about Swish is Swish is a phone app, basically, that if you have someone else's phone number, you can just go ahead and hit a couple buttons and send them money instantly mm. to their bank account. Uh, what you need to have is a Bank ID code. Now, Bank ID is awesome. It's basically anytime you want to pay or buy something, you just simply type a code in. You can log in to do your taxes wow. with a Bank ID. It is a much more secure system than what we have in the United States. Sweden doesn't have the same problem with fraud that you do in the U.S. because many times if you have to make a online purchase of like $50 or more, you have to use your bank ID code and it won't work on your card or you have to open up your card. So when you have things like Swish, you can go ahead and pay to people instantly. Now people never have an excuse to not pay you. They can't go, oh, I don't have money right now. If you're splitting the cost of something, you could just pay for it yourself and then they swish you instantly. And I don't know, I forgot to look and see how older, how much older this video was, but I know now like people, if you got iPhone, you got Apple Pay, I think there's a Google Pay. Uh, you got apps like Cash App, uh, apps like PayPal, all these different things that, uh, even some stores take, like, if I forget my wallet, I can still use my phone because you can put, like, your credit and debit cards on your phone. But still, I kind of get what he's saying, like, protect. But most sites say they're protected, so that's another thing to make sure that everything's secured when you're doing stuff online because you just never know, like, because people are out here it's still doing it today. Which is awesome. It's nice to be able to use it at shops and purchases because you don't have to necessarily put your card in to use it that way. So that's also very secure. You're not giving out your card number or anything. You're just going ahead and switching. Like I said, we don't have the problem with fraud that we have in the United States. I do think it's something we should look at in America to make it a little bit better. Number two has to be taxes. Now let me explain. Uh, when I do my taxes in the United States, my tax forms are usually almost 30 pages long. And in Sweden, you get a piece of paper that says, this is what you paid, and it takes 
three seconds to do. You basically log in with your bank ID, the one I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. You go to the Skatteverket app, which is the tax agency here in Sweden. Boop, boop, boop. You're done. Your taxes wow. are done. It's a, it's a much less complicated system. Now, I know in America they have a computer system to use it, but I just think it's easier. And now taxes isn't this big, long kind of process you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Another that's thing that Sweden does with uh, taxes is sales tax. I actually kind of prefer this. What they do is they put the tax already in the item. So if something costs 25 crowns and it's a t-shirt at a store, it costs 25 crowns. When you go to pay, it's gonna cost 25. And that's like, we have a restaurant that they're the only ones that do this, which I think is good because people see what they're already going to pay for instead of trying to round up how much tax. If you just have $10, it makes sense that you get something that ain't going to go over that $10, you know, especially if you might need an extra five cents or something. But we have a restaurant called Whataburger. I don't know if y'all heard of Whataburger, but Whataburger already have the set prices and they show you what you're going to pay. Like if I want a burger for eight bucks or that's how much it costs. You know, this was the first year when I went home to the United States that I was a little bit annoyed with the sales sales tax because something's $100, but it's really $106 mm -hmm. because you have to pay that. It's a major complaint I actually hear from people when they do go to the United States. They don't like the sales tax after the fact. It just seems to be like a more efficient way to do it. And I think that's something that Sweden does. But also, I feel that my taxes actually go to something here in Sweden as opposed to the United States. At least I see mm -hmm. where it goes a lot more with the healthcare, uh, with the better, with the with the free education, if you will. Number we talk about that a lot. We talked about that in a lot. Healthcare, uh, <laughs> with the better, with the, with the free education, if you will. Number three is going to be education as far as how you can make choices in education. Now, if you're in the United States and you're poor and you come from a poor area, you're pretty much stuck at that school system there. The problem yep, with uh, schools in poor areas typically has to be that those schools take a lot of their money for the school from the overall tax revenue from the people that live there. And when I was in Ohio, for example, in Youngstown, we had areas in Youngstown where they didn't have computers, they didn't have money for mm -hmm. books, they weren't able to pay like high quality teachers. But here in Sweden, you have the ability to choose to go to any school you want to. As long as there's room for you, you have to sometimes wait in a queue. But what that means is no matter what social economic background you come from here in Sweden, uh, you're going to be able to get the same quality education as someone that's rich as well. Yes, that makes a, and that's, I feel like that's very important. And I know we talk about the education systems and stuff, but, you know, I was at a school, you know, a lower economic school, and there are some things, especially like when I got older and started seeing, like we had a bunch of low quality stuff, but, you know, sometimes that stuff, we just thought, oh, that's what it was, that's how it is, you know, for us, but go to other schools, they were getting better stuff. And I realized that when I started working in the school system, my eyes became open. And I really think that that's a fantastic thing that they offer here in Sweden. Also, uh, education is free, uh, higher education, but you do usually have to pay for room and board and things like that. Mm -hmm. And what, what Sweden does is Sweden uh, will give you money, it give you money to live off of and uh, for rent. You that's do have good. to pay that money back over time, but uh, you have like 50 years to pay it off. You have like your whole life. You don't start out in such a huge <laughs> yeah, debt. I would probably life. say the average yeah. Swedish debt might be five to $10,000, where in the United States it's 30. It's really hard mm -hmm. to start a home and a life when you're already in debt and a good portion of your money has to go Facts. to your education, especially if you don't get a job in the field that you even study. Come on now, I went to school. I still owe on mine. I still owe like 30,000 on mine. And guess what? I worked a job that only made 40000 a year. Like, it, it makes no sense to me. It's ridiculous. It has it's to ridiculous. go to your education, especially if you don't get a job in the field that you even studied for. So I think it's a better system all the way around. Number yes. four has to be recycling. In Sweden, no yeah, matter exactly. where you go, if you live in an apartment complex, there is always an area you can go where you can throw away trash, your food, mm -hmm. metal, uh, colored bottles, uh, clear bottles, plastic uh with aluminum what you can do is every store where you buy whether it's beer or coca-cola uh you have to pay like a six cents extra for the bottle or one crown in swedish and what you do is you get your money back when you go and recycle every grocery mm. store has a place where you can put your aluminum cans back in what i like about it is it gives everybody an incentive to recycle there's no excuse you're already going to the right. store you just bring your aluminum bottles there or your, your aluminum cans there 
Also, what I like about it is uh, if people leave their bottles or, or trash outside for whatever reason, they forget, people are going to pick it up and take it to the machine for money. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. If you are homeless in Sweden, like we don't have really homeless, but if you are people that don't have a lot of money, uh, you, if you find this, you can go and find these bottles and you can get cash that way. And see, I think that's important too. Already having access to just get money back for it, you know, because I don't even know, like, we have like recycling bins, but to be honest, I don't know where to take that stuff to where if I was recycling cans where I live, where I can take it and get something back, you know, I don't even know where to go. Uh, you, if you find this, you can go and find these bottles and you can get cash that way. So it gives people an incentive to go around and look for it for extra cash, and it gives people an incentive to recycle. One awesome thing we do also is with good. the leftover food yeah, is actually used for like biofuel for buses. So a lot of our buses mm. in Sweden actually run on uh, food that's you know, made into like a you know gas from the food that people don't eat. So uh, that is wow. a much more efficient way to do it. And I think it's awesome that Sweden does this. Now I hear that certain states like California good. have much better recycling options, but I just think that Sweden does it so easily. I think the aluminum idea is a really great incentive and mm -hmm. something that we could do in the United States that wouldn't be too hard. And I don't think it would be difficult for people to, to get a, on top of it because a lot of times it might be tough to get the money back from recycling aluminum in the United States. We're here, it's a much easier system. Yeah. Number five has to be public transportation. <laughs> I know if you live in New York City yeah. and possibly Chicago, uh, New York City has some of the best public transportation in the world. But as soon as you go outside of the major cities, if you don't have a car, mm -hmm. you basically don't have a job or a life. Because uh, you just don't have the same freedom that you would have in the United States. The United That's States perfect. system is built around the car. Now take that another way, I have been living in Sweden for seven years and I have never once bought a car. Now. I'm going wow. to probably get a vehicle this year at some point, but it hasn't been so bad. I pay about $100 a month. I get unlimited buses and trains within the area that I am. And it's not, it's not always the fastest to get to work, but you can take advantage of that time. I can read, I can listen to a mm -hmm. podcast on the bus. But also if you're younger, if you're like 16 and younger, you have this freedom that you don't have necessarily in the United States as far as freedom of movement because I was 16 and I was lucky enough to have a car. But if you're 16 in the United States and you don't have a car, you can maybe bike around your neighborhood, but a lot of times... You don't really have that. I know what up. we have to ask friends for a ride home and stuff like that. That was the toughest thing, like after practice or something, because if my parents still worked, ask a friend or not even a friend, just somebody that you knew that was on the team and most people complain about they didn't want to waste their gas and stuff like, and I vowed to never do that. So I, I when I got my car, I started helping people because people I knew some people that didn't help me because they complained about gas, about going down the street, and now gas is more expensive than ever where I live. If you're 16 in the United States and you don't have a car, you can maybe bike around your neighborhood, but a lot of times it's not really pass like it's not really walker friendly or bike rider friendly mm -hmm. in the United States. You really need a car. You can't just like pass an intersection on your bike. Or work or walk across it so that's one thing the other thing is like when I'm in I live in Lake Shipping if I want to go to Stockholm it's it's a lot of times more cost-effective and actually faster and cheaper mm -hmm. to just go ahead and take a high-speed train to Stockholm it takes less time I can then take a bus from somewhere else I'm heading to Stockholm this weekend and it's just the best efficient way to do it we just don't have this the systems in place in the United States to do that yet mm -hmm. um, I know they're working they're talking about work having a high-speed train in California which would connect San Francisco and Anaheim See, everything's in California. Where I live down here, we got this thing called the Connection Bus. But the Connection is mainly for like people with like disabilities and stuff like that. They're like the main ones that use it. And I think it's like maybe two bucks. So it's cost efficient. It's not expensive. But they will take them anywhere to like their doctor's appointments and different things like that. So our Connection is mainly, it's a little bus mainly for people that are disabled or elderly. So if you don't have a car, you're pretty much stuck walking, like if you're younger and stuff, to be honest. Uh, we're having a high-speed train in California, which would connect San Francisco, An Anaheim, and Los Angeles. And I think that that would be a really interesting thing. It's just trouble finding the funding now. Uh, and 
I think in the United States, we would really benefit from adding some public transportation, especially things for biking and things like that. Mm -hmm. I just think that people need more options. And on top of that, it is overall better for the environment. Now, I know that the United States kind of economy runs off of selling the car, but if you look at the statistical data, most like millennials nowadays are owning cars less and less and actually don't feel that need to have to own a car. Yeah. So I, I think you're going to see people renting cars in the future and moving more towards public transportation. I think it's better for the environment. Like I'm in much better shape because I walk to a lot of places or bike. Mm -hmm. Then nobody don't want to pay a lot of money for a car payment. And like I said, gas is going, gas is going up today. Like I just paid like $4 per gallon. Usually the less I ever the uh, least I ever pay were like two dollars, which was like two or three years ago maybe, but it's just rising and rising. I think it's better for the environment. Like I'm in much better shape because I walk to a lot of places or bike. So awesome way that they go about That's it. Convenient. I think Sweden does a fanta fantastic job with this. Now, if you guys want to support me in any way, shape, or form, not asking for money, but um, I work as the community manager of Lurkit. Now, Lurkit is Lurkit. an awesome website where if you love esports, you can get all your esports entertainment in one place from YouTube, mm -hmm. Mixer, uh, Twitch, uh, especially with someone like Ninja moving over to Mixer. What's awesome about uh, Lurkit is you can follow everybody there. You can see when they're streaming. Mm -hmm. We have a multiple stream service where you can watch multiple streams at the same time. My favorite feature is the tournament feature. Basically, you can pick an eSport that you like. I love CSGO, so like over the summer when there was an ESL tournament happening, I can click on the CSGO page and I can click tournaments and I can see the times that the matches were playing because it was in Europe. Uh, and we just have a new feature now where you have news uh, and it can work on a mobile app. So cool. what you can do is you can go there and check it out. And if you really like it, I would love if you guys could create an account because uh, this is something that we really feel passionate about. I'm excited to work with this. And maybe it's not a well-known fact, but I, I love video still games available. and I love esports. I've been playing CSGO for, for six years at this point. And I'm just excited for the future with it as well. So if there's any time you want to support me, that would be the best way you could support me right now. If you guys like this content, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, I would love to have you subscribe. And I'll see you guys. I think that's the end of that video. But definitely, definitely can agree with some things because it makes sense. Like, I mean, we've seen a lot of videos. I've reacted to plenty of videos on how America is just different from everybody else in ways they can help their people. You know, everybody else seems to be treating their people right, doing what needed, and hearing their peoples out. But I don't know, man. I don't know. It's definitely, definitely different, especially where I live, like you were saying, with public transportation. Like, we don't have too many buses and stuff running where I live because we're not, I'm not in a major city. Then the money thing, I think that's huge. So people that, like you said, maybe colorblind, maybe uh, have a disability or something, like, they can still know how much they're spending, what they're using. Because people will take advantage of you. People will try to. But all in all, good video. I think that is some better things that America can surely, surely adopt and do. Even if it's not all of America, just certain places. Like, cause I, I haven't been all over the world yet, but I know some places, even where I live, some places are still better than where I'm at and where I'm at is still better than some other places. So, but guys definitely enjoy this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. That's all I have for this video. Hey, y'all be blessed, be the best, and be you. Hey, dawg.